This boat's got a unique hull design for a 20 footer and you can tell. Get something to tow behind your nice four wheel drive or maybe be a little bit different to all the other school dads with Briggs. Well, if that's you, we might just have the boat for you. My name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life, and today we're on the Saxdor 200, a new brand from Finland, built in Poland, and this is their first model, selling like hotcakes, but they've already expanded to a range of 32 and soon to be 40 feet. 200's pretty unique. Based on the cutting bow concept, which is a super popular concept in today's world, and I'll come back to that in a second, but it's got quite a few different variations, and it's, it's for the boaters that want something that's hassle-free, really easy to use, low maintenance, can tow it behind your car, use it like a yacht tender, or just keep it somewhere convenient that doesn't cost too much. The layouts are multifunctional, so it comes with jockey seating, which we do have on another boat, and we're gonna go and have a look at that in a second. But something I haven't really seen before, which is pretty cool. It's, if you picture the jet skis, um, which we're not allowed to have here in Sydney Harbour, it's the jet ski style of seating. So you can really lock yourself in and enjoy the ride. I think that's just gonna be great for a lot of younger people, a lot of kids or people who are used to that style of boating and wanna experience it and bring friends along, which you can't really do on a jet ski. So that's cool. But if you don't want that concept and you just want a traditional boat, well then here we have it. Um, it's your traditional seating on a 20 foot boat with all the features you would expect on a much larger boat. So come with me, I'm gonna jump on the back of the boat and we'll have a bit of a walkthrough. Oh. So as you can see, you don't really need a swim ladder. Although we do have it, we're doing exactly what this boat is designed for. It's just something you wanna run up on the beach, keep it simple, go to the coffee shops and enjoy your day. Just, just low hassles on a boat like this. In terms of the transom, it's an open transom and I'll explain why in a second, but the engine is mounted quite professionally on the back here and we've got this ski pole just here. So that's an option, but that's a really good grab handle. The earlier models didn't have a swim ladder, but this one does, so that just pulls out here and we've got another grab handle on the transom just there. Both port and starboard, we've got these neat lockers, decent size, so that's about the bottom there, so it goes down to there, there and there. That'll double really well as an esky, um, but it's also meant for your ropes and fenders and other bits and pieces. So you have one of them on both sides. You've got your courtesy lighting, so that's dotted around the boat, and we have some down lights and navigation lights, so it's a true um, day and night style of boat. And underneath the floor just here, this hatch, this unlatches, that'll lift out and we can get into the bilge. So you can access the bilge, um, probably could store a few things in there, but you really don't need to because, check this out. I just love these finish and the way they design. It's always sensible thinking applied to the design process. So look at that. This now just creates a really social open area on a 20 foot boat, which, you know, it's hard to find on a lot of boats in this category because they're all focused on fishing, which these are not. These sax doors are focused on doing what we're doing right now. So you could seat one person here, one person there, and two people on either side like this, and you've got a good social area, somewhere to chat. Or if you want to be in the shade, move forward like so. Everybody's facing forward, they're comfortable, you're secure, you're dry, and you're out of the wind. And you've got this protection, a little bit of protection from the sun and the rain. This is the hard top, T-top just here. There is an option for a soft top. And there's also options to do sunshades going out over the foredeck as well. Now, I have been told uh, that Saxdor are working on a new front seat option, which is actually gonna swivel around and then there'll be a removable lunch table in here. So just another example of sensible use of space. But whilst I'm here, I mentioned the water goes uh, up on over the deck and just drains through, which is great, you know, for, for sporty, you know, smallish style boats like this. But where are you gonna put your gear? Where are you gonna put your cameras and all your stuff that's not supposed to get wet? Well, we have a solution. Underneath here. 
I got four bags in here. I got my safety grab bag and all my expensive camera gears. This is an enclosed bucket, um, bin, or whatever you want to call it. It's not going to get wet. The water can flow through. This area is protected. And then moving forward, same again. So everybody can get on with their bags, with their gear, and everybody's got a place to put their stuff. So that's just good, sensible boat thinking. I like that. Whilst we're here, the Targa Arch, solid as. So this thing's a powder coated black aluminium, um, you know, good hand hold. Yes, you got to duck under it because it is a 20 foot boat. You know, you got to watch out when you're walking around, but it's a good hand hold and you can mount your speakers on it, face them aft if you're doing a little bit of wakeboarding and water sports. And you can also put, you know, if you wanted those holders for your wakeboards, this would be a perfect place to mount them as well. Um, before I move forward, I've got my fuel filler here, my water filler there. This particular boat has got the water tank, so you fill that up and we have a shower on the transom just there. That is an option. Moving forward, this one's got this optional glass infill, which with this little grab handle just sort of completes the boat a little bit. And it's another thing to hold on to, which is nice. And to the helm. Possibly one of the best helm setups on a 20 foot boat I have seen in a long time. They've really thought everything through. So the visibility to the bow all the way around the boat from a seated position is fantastic. The ergonomics of the helm are wonderful. So I'm, you know, I'm 5'7", I can see straight over here and no interruptions whatsoever. I've got my left hand on the wheel, my right hand on the throttle. I can do my safety lanyard, clip it in here and put it around my leg. and everything is accessible and operational. I've got this beautiful flat screen glass finish here. So the Simrad's totally flush with this, uh, apart from my GoPro, just ignore that. That doesn't come with the boat. Um, so that's nice. You can obviously, um, you know, I wouldn't bother mounting extra screens to this because it's only a 20 foot boat. Most people won't even bother at mounting a screen, but that is there. We've got the uh, transducer. So we got, we've got the depth on this one. We've got all the other chart plotter functions as well. Um, this boat's got the trim tabs and then we've got the stereo, the optional stereo control here and all the boat controls here. So that's horn, auxiliary, bilge pumps and navigation roof and deck lights. Just under here, we've got a uh, charger for the phone. So that is a dual USB so we can charge two phones. And underneath here, we have three pockets. So you go phone, phone, phones, and then extra bits and pieces. This area is a dry area, so you're not gonna get spray here. So it's fine for your electronics, run a cable and keep them charging. Now, so whilst I am here and talking about control, we should talk about the options for the motors on these boats. Um, it's available with from a 100 horsepower on the base model, all the way up to 175. So the 100 horsepower to the 150 is your normal Morse controls and your manual steering, hydraulic steering. And then once you go from the 150 to 175, it's power assisted and electronic throttle. So it's just a, a bit of a nicer driving experience. Obviously we got the more power. We did 40 knots today on this, uh, on this boat with the 150. So it really gets along, but not everyone's gonna need that much power. And I tell you what, the price on the base model is super sharp. So that's, that's pretty impressive. And before I leave the helm, something that we didn't really use on the drive, but we're, we're gonna film a separate test drive, which you'll have to check out uh, that video is these grab handles just here here and even the Targar arch acts as one as well it's just nice to see lots of places to hold on as you move around the boat um, as I said not super necessary but good to see but one thing which is kind of necessary necessary as we come into winter and in some of the southern states is this windscreen here so this by undoing this latch here uh, and this one here We've got a couple of sail tracks and the screen goes up to here. So we get full wind protection and then we've got a wind deflector here and here. So the two, the helmsman and the passenger are reasonably protected and you can definitely get along without getting those um, crying eyes effect that you do on a cold day. And lastly, we've got two drink holders here and here, which are a decent size. You definitely get a, a beer with a, with a cooler in there and it's drained. That's no problems at all. Um, moving forward, access to the bow is easy. 
uh, that's where you probably would utilize that grab handle. We've got the speaker just here, the other one on the other side, this is the horn. And just whilst we're here, that's the pop out for hanging a fender. The bow lounge, I love this area. Like again, for a 20 foot boat, it's usable. They're making such good use of the available space. Just to give you some perspective, how good's that? Like, definitely want to come and hang out here on a hot day. You can option it with some poles and a sunshade. I think this would be a great reading spot with a couple of throw cushions. But one thing that's worth talking about, which you don't see on many boats of this size, and it just, just goes back to the practical nature of a cutting bow that can really do anything. I can see people going remote, people going to random places, hooking it up behind the four wheel drive and going places you've never thought of going because you can camp on this boat. I'll just undo this latch here and this one here. This sun lounge, yes, it's the bow lounge. It's a great, great place to hang out for the day. It's also a bed. It's actually a little cabin. You just do those two latches, lift this up, and yes, whilst we've got this full of gear today, because we don't plan on overnighting, the base of this floor just here, this lounge just removes slots in there. So not only is that a perfect place to store it so it doesn't get covered in bird poo, but you can option this as a little camper tent area, which has a window just here to let some light in, some tents, uh, tent material on either side so you don't get the rain. So you've got airflow, you've got light, um, you've got a nice bed for two people, what more do you need? I just think that is a super neat and a good use of space. I just love seeing boat designers apply multiple functions into the one area. So coming to the bow before we get down and have a look at the hull on the boat next door, I could hear you now, well, you know, what's the anchoring setup? Where's the anchor windlass? You don't need one, it's a 20 foot boat. Just, just have a, a small anchor, a little bit of chain and some rope, keep it in a bucket in the, in the locker or down below somewhere and just haul it out or do what we're doing. Just, just nose it up on the sand. If you're not going far, the boat's not gonna go anywhere, it's fine. But what they have sensibly done is left this area nice and clear. So if we are putting a rope uh, and we've got an anchor uh, you know, in the sand up the front, it's not gonna get caught on the navigation lights. And when you do need the navigation lights, they're already there. So that's super good, love it. Whilst we're here, I said just step off on the beach. Well, it's that difficult. Like I'm 5'7", this is how big the boat is. So, you know, you can just do that. You can hop up, swing your legs over. If you're a tall bloke or girl, oops, I don't wanna lose that in the water. If you're a tall bloke or girl, you know, you just sit your bum on there and swing your legs over, so it's fine. Um, finally, before we go and have a look at the hull on the other boat, this nice rubber rub rail all the way around the boat just gives you peace of mind. Go bump into things, don't worry about it. That's good to see. So come back with me here. We'll just have a quick look at this hull profile because this is the perfect opportunity to check it out. So many boats traditionally are going for uh, flatter hull sections underneath the waterline, bigger, uh, more flared, wider bows. And yes, that gives you a bigger, wider sun lounge up the front, but it also gets you launching airborne when you hit a wave uh, behind another boat or you're out in rough conditions, and then you gotta land. And that just means bouncing around, chucking water all over the place. It's just not comfortable. It's great if you're on a lake. We don't have too many lakes around here. So, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to attack those waves and cut through them smoothly, which is what Saxdor have done and many other manufacturers these days. But with the cutting bow, we slice through the waves and then we carry our deep V all the way down to the back of the boat. Now, ordinarily, all that deep V means contact with the water, therefore drag. That means inefficiency, you might have a slow boat. The way to overcome that is by adding air channels here and here. So what we're doing, we've got plenty of contact with the water, the boat's not trying to exit, so therefore we have a smooth ride, and we instead ride on a cushion of air bubbles. We suck air in this channel and that one there, and it aerates the water underneath the boat, and it allows us to drive hard, fast, and flat, and just cut through those waves, and it gives everyone on board just a better experience. It's as simple as that. Well, I enjoyed that. I certainly hope you did too. This Saxdor 200, 
punches above its weight. It's a boat, it really can do a lot of things. So if you're looking for simple, cost-effective, smooth, fast and fun, definitely check these boats out. The guys from Adventure Boats certainly are able to help you. These things are multiplying like you wouldn't believe. And I'm gonna put a link to their website in the description below. My name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life. See you on the next one.